Well, I think we'll start. Just, uh, my name is Brian Lawler. I'm site director for the Global Brain Health Institute here at Trinity College Dublin. And I just want to wish you a very warm welcome to Creative Brain Week 2023. So the themes for the next three days are conflict, imagination, and joy. And I hope that we'll move seamlessly and painlessly from conflict tomorrow through imagination and then to joy on Thursday. And that we will be quite tired, but very happy by Thursday evening. So the cornerstone of the Global Brain Health Institute is the Atlantic Fellows Program. And the Atlantic Fellows Program is, is, consists of people coming from different parts of the world, from different professions, from the arts, from the humanities, from science, from medicine. And they come together, they train together, because we believe that the only way to change the narrative around dementia is to break down professional silos. Now, GBHI is passionate about the intersection of arts, creativity, and brain science. And we strongly believe in the, in the power and the impact of arts, creativity, and the brain to improve our health and well-being. I wanted to look back a little bit on 2022, which was the inaugural year for Creative Brain Week. And for me, I think there were many learnings. But what stood out most was the importance of arts and creativity in the processing of trauma. And what I learned uh, was that trauma can inhibit the language areas of the brain. And as a psychiatrist, talking therapy is often unable to reach many of these individuals who are experiencing trauma. However, music and the arts can really help a person process traumatic events. And what struck me from some of the conversations last year was the importance of partnerships, of partnerships between clinicians, scientists, and artists. And it became very clear to me that by collaborating across these different disciplines as a community, there's a much better opportunity of helping people who are experiencing trauma. Now, looking forward to this week, I'm very excited about what we can create together in terms of new partnerships and new collaborations. And there are a number of partnerships and collaborations that I think can happen this week. First of all, we have got WHO, the Arts and Health, um, visiting Dublin. And we hope that we will build strong collaborations and partnerships between WHO, Arts and Health, and GBHI, Creative Ireland, and the HSC and the Department of Health. We also have members of the Atlantic Fellows community here in Dublin from many different programs. And we hope that we will see a lot of collaboration and collaborative projects develop from the week that they spend together. And finally, we hope that there will be many collaborations that will develop within the university here at Trinity, but across universities uh, in Ireland as part of Creative Week. So Creative Week, Brain Week has really become a key, pla pla key, key platform for transdisciplinary work uh, across arts, science, and creativity at a local and a global level. And as I say, I'm very excited and looking forward to what we can achieve together this week. Now, I'd like to hand over to my dear colleague uh, and uh, founding director of GBHI, Ian Robertson, who's going to give some reflections and some challenges, I think, to your brains uh, <laughs> as we face into this week. Ian. Thanks, Brian. Thank you. So I'd like to I'm going to do three things. I'd like you, first of all, to close your eyes and take a long, slow breath in for the count of four and out for the count of six. Breathe out for longer than you breathe in, and do that again. And do it once more. And many of you felt slightly different after doing that compared to before. Yeah. That's because you change the chemistry of your brain. More specifically, the 
you change the rate of firing of a little part of the brain called the locus ceruleus, which is deep in the middle of the brain and is the only source of a chemical messenger called noradrenaline. And noradrenaline is the brain's adrenaline. It is activated when we're frightened, excited, stimulated, um, curious, shocked. For so it's a general purpose wake-up chemical for the brain. Too little of it, like when we're bored and jaded and lacking a sense of purpose and our brain underperforms. Too much of it when we're tra traumatized or stressed or overpressured or multitasking and trying to hold all the balls in the air, our brain underperforms. Just the right amount, there's a sweet spot in the middle that allows the different parts of our brain to resonate in phase, about 40 cycles per second, to give us that sense of flow, a sense of being on, the, on top of things. And the magic of the locus ceruleus is, is chemosensitive. It responds precisely to how much carbon dioxide is in your blood at any one time. And so the reason you felt different after you did the slow breathing was because you changed the rate of firing of the locus ceruleus. Now, I'm going to bring these three apparently disparate things together in a moment. Second thing I'm going to ask you to do is to solve a problem. The princess is in the tower, 40 feet above the ground, locked in there. She has a 20-foot rope. She wants to escape, so she cuts the rope in half and manages to escape the tower. How does she do it? Yes! Cut the rope vertically, okay? Relatively few people get that problem. And it is a problem, it's a class of problem called an insight problem that can only be solved, that cannot be solved by verbal analytic thinking. It requires you to deploy other types of thinking in the brain, particularly visuospatial thinking, um, that are actually inhibited by language. Brian was saying about language. And what creativity and the arts and dance and poetry and singing and music and creativity in social organization, creativity in community organization, what creativity does is it activates parts of the brain that overrides the kind of the envelope of verbal analytic thinking that we tend to dominate our thinking. And we can, if we manage to switch off or suppress temporarily, because we need it, we need that kind of thinking. It's not bad, it's wonderful. Logic is wonderful, verbal reasoning is excellent, but we need to be able to switch modes. And that's just an example. The Princess in the Tower is an example of a, a, a class of problem that can only be solved uh, by switching on or switching off one mode or, or suppressing it and activating another physiospatial. So my third, and I'm going to come back to that in a moment, the third uh, question I have for you, I'm going to ask you four questions um, and you can put up your hand to each of them. To what extent does this apply to you? Enjoy hearing new ideas. ideas. Put up your hand if that's true. Have a vivid imagination. Okay, let me know. Get excited by new ideas. Believe in the importance of art. Do not like art. Do not enjoy going to art museums. Believe that too much tax money goes to support artists. Do not like poetry. Okay. So, these are just sample questions from, from a a personality dimension that's called openness to experience. And it's one of the big five personality dimensions. The first four were, if you're yes, you're, you load high on that factor. The second four questions, you load low on it. And what uh, Emmanuel Pini, who's a PhD student in the Institute of Neuroscience here, co-supervised in his PhD by Paul Dockery and myself, discovered recently, was your 
uh, where you stand on that personality dimension relates to the volume and the health of your locus ceruleus, that part of the brain that you uh, controlled with your breathing there. Um, and that's very, very good news. What it shows is, and it's a correlation, it's not definitively causal, causal link, but what we do know is that curiosity, openness to new uh, experiences, exposure to novelty, all the thing that, that artistic practice and creativity bring, nourish that noradrenaline system that you, can, you influence with your breathing. And related to that is when we're in the optimal state, we're more able to switch modes. We're, we're more in control of our own brain function to be able to solve problems that are difficult to solve in a verbal analytic way that require a creative impulse. Like the Northern Ireland, the Good Friday Agreement involved some incredibly creative, interesting uh, the, the, the solutions, some of which are, wouldn't, wouldn't follow from a normal classic verbal analytic approach that require that ability to step outside that mode of thinking. So I just welcome you to this, I think the first in the world, the, the laboratory of the intersection of brain sciences and the amazing work of creativity of the arts, which is increasingly recognized as crucial for our health, but also crucial for our economies and for dealing with things like artificial intelligence and dealing with the 85 million jobs that are going to be lost worldwide in the next two years because of artificial intelligence and the 84 new million new jobs that will be created that we have to relearn and retool to deal with. That requires a different a flexibility of thinking that the arts and creativity is, are critical for uh, fostering. Thank you very much.